Hello and welcome back to another episode of Downhill Smooth Tarmac and you might have noticed some changes we're not in my tiny little workshop today we've actually come down to Pickering's Bikes to meet up with Dave and we're going to be going through a bike that he's got in for service so I can show you guys what happens to your bike when it comes into a bike shop and how a proper bike mechanic makes it safe for you. So stay tuned we're going to go through the bike. Okay, so to kick things off, I'm going to hand over to Dave just to talk about the bike that's coming for one of his customers while I've got the bike on the ground. So take us through it. Yeah, so a customer came in with his bike that he's uh, had for a little while now. It's a bit dusty. I think he's been in the shed a while and he's had it on a turbo trainer. So I'm going to just do a few quick checks whilst I've got it on the ground before I put it in the work stand to see uh, how it looks. First impressions are that uh, the brake levers are out of position this one's loose oh dear yeah, it's oh. definitely one's <laughs> quite a lot higher than the other uh but there's, there's not a lot of, there's no damage on that uh to suggest that it's been bashed so and the bars are straight so i've no real worries about it i think it's just it's just been loose it's just been used on a turbo trainer indoors yeah. where it doesn't really matter by the look of it and it's a it looks like an old tiaga 4600 or 4500 group set so pretty robust yeah bomb proof stuff yeah brakes are nice sort of nice and clunky there cables aren't too bad one cable here really tight that's been shortened at some point so we'll have to replace that um so whilst it's on the ground like this i'm not going to do too many sort of physical checks of brakes and gears i'm yep. going to check the headset uh, so there's these two bearings here um what i expect is that it doesn't grind there's no notches as i go like this and that when i put it on the floor and put the front brake on yep quite hard that there's no rocking you don't want any play so there's no you can actually put your fingers round and just see if there's any any play at the top and bottom upper and lower bearings Spot on. and that one's good yep happy with that okay so next step is uh let's get it in the stand proper yep. we'll get the camera on it and let's move through it i think this bike is going to need quite a lot of attention just at first glance so in the stand it's on the crossbar but it's an aluminium bike and it's got some high density foam here just to protect it's uh, just just light enough as well isn't it it's yeah. not like you've clamped it tight it's just it is clamping the, the rear brake cable but it doesn't matter we know we know that <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to start from front Go for um, it. Yeah, yeah. obviously a puncture somewhere in that tire but the tires don't look like they're particularly dry or cracked or anything like that they're not too bad at all decent sort decent sort of tires as well 23s though quite narrow um almost old school now 23 that's right they? yeah give it a bit of a spin oh wow yeah that's a bit bent that isn't it uh, right i think that deserves further investigation yeah what um, we got going on there then so other than the cobwebs um <laughs> just feeling the spokes oh um, yeah the, i mean there's one or yeah. two that are wow three uh, definitely only been on a turbo trainer you can't get down the road like that and i can see the threads on the spoke there i can turn the spoke nipple with my fingers um so hopefully that that's going to be okay when we straighten it. it, it there's no cracks uh, there's around no the nipples. Ones, is there? No, the brake right. tracks are all right on, on this as well. Yeah. So generally, I think that's quite repairable. Uh, bearings, I, I might not be able to pick it up on the mic. Mm. There is a little bit of a rumble. Uh, I can feel it through my hand on the bars more than anything else. Yeah. You say they're cup and cone, aren't they? Those yeah, so they look like there'll it. be an open bearing that can be yeah. Will you just re-grease? Do you think? Yeah, I'd yep. be half tempted to leave that. It's not yeah. so bad that at all. Um, it's not tight, which is the important thing. If you've got an aluminium hub body with steel balls in it. If it's tight to move, those steel balls are going to wear the hub out like billio. Yeah. So I'm not totally worried about that. There's no there's no lateral movement in it, so it's quite well adjusted. Uh, we've already checked the headset when it was on the ground. Yep. So I'm happy with that. Just a quick check there. That's that's fine. Um, bars don't look bent. Headset's tight. There's nothing nothing going on there. Not a problem at all. Um, front brake. Just visually, I can see that someone's adjusted this screw here. Uh, that's oh, quite yeah. a long way out to what I'd expect. Yeah. And I think that's brought home by the fact that one of the that's not too bad but 
they do look a bit skew there, don't they, with yeah. that much adjustment. So once the wheel's true, we'd, we'd undo the brake and, and we'd adjust that screw and we'd adjust, adjust the, the caliper backwards and forwards. Okay. So not too bad at all. Man. Okay, so moving on, heading towards the back of the bike. What, yeah. we, have, what we have in next? So just looking at the frame joints, it's, it, it's not never usually a problem. But it's aluminium weld, so it's not a problem at all. I don't know quite what's happened to this saddle here, but it's uh, it's a bit skew with. Yeah, that's not straight uh, at all, is it? No, no, it's not too far out of place, I suppose. Uh, rear brake, um, again, this this bolt is out of place, so you can mm. see that that's causing this to spring incorrectly. Is um, that whole brake loose as well, or is it actually just the spring that's affecting it? I think it's likely to be a bit loose on that yeah. uh, that nut there. Um, the cables aren't too bad actually. Looking at the that one's a bit yeah, rusty. Look. That's rusted. Look, this is a bit of a peril of things that go on a turbo trainer because you sweat yeah. all over it. You Same can see here. the top tube. You can see the sweat on it. Yeah, and that causes your cables, especially if they're not stainless cables. They are gonna they're gonna corrode. Um, yeah, I'm sure you'll probably find a bit inside the headset as well. That's a common mm. one. One of the things we hate about turbo trainer bikes is the bar tape soaks the sweat up. Mm. and it gets underneath and it can actually corrode the aluminium of the bars assuming they're aluminium the alloy uh, and it's horrible to take the tape off it stinks yeah. <laughs> so we avoid that <laughs> um right so rear brake gonna need some adjustment things like yeah. that uh a quick look at the rear wheel give it a spin that's actually reasonably straight um it is slightly out so that would go in the true in stand as well yep um, Any loose ones on that one, or are we have a quick uh, feel around? It's a lot it. better shape than the, the front just, one, that's for sure. There's nothing obviously wrong with it. Yeah. Yeah, just a little that. true up on that one. Yeah. And actually, when I when I did that little spin there, I can feel through the frame to see if there's any any rumbling of the bearings, and that's silky smooth, better than the front one actually. That's good. That's good. Um, and no side to side play. So we, I'm pretty confident about those bearings, and also through that. I can, I've really checked the bearings in the field body, so I'm pretty happy with that as well. Uh, so I'm going to move down now towards the back wheel and the, and the, so the cogs and stuff like the, that. Onto the drivetrain now. Yeah, um, just visually checking the teeth on here to see if there's any sign of them. Sort of these these edges here uh, all, all round over, and you get you sometimes get like a shark spin as they call it on that on that edge there, as opposed to this edge here. But if, if these start to go, this is when your chain starts to slip that way. Uh, it's actually caused by the chain length changing between the rivet and the rivet. So as that gets wider, it makes the distance between the teeth wider. And then gotcha. it And then they, they just basically mould to suit each other, don't they? They do, yeah. Uh, so so an old, uh, a, a new chain might not work on old cogs. Um, so I'll have a quick look at the rear drailia. This is a short cage Tiagra. Just checking to see if there's any play in the bushes. That's reasonable, actually, for this age of stuff. Uh, I'd be happy with that. Um, and the, it's nice and tight, the springs and everything. So pretty happy with that, generally. Uh, let's just do a quick chain check. Yep. Trusty park tool chain checker. So with this, you're just going to establish whether the chain is still in good order or whether it's due for a replacement. Yeah, so I think I know what my money's on, but yeah. let's have a look. So that that's it's not gone full full out, but uh, based on the chain check, we should be about 0.5 or 0.75. That's gone out to straight out to 0.75. So not it's it's in it's at the replace point. So um, hopefully you should be able to save the cassette. Then do you think? Yeah, I think the cassette. One thing with the chain, if you go like this, you can sort of I can feel that this play in there it's not tight so uh, I would say that that needs re replacing just by feel um, move across now to front drailia chain rings etc um, front drailia that's nice and tight springy looking down the line of it it's not bent the cage here is nicely set up with, in parallel with the teeth of the chain ring so I'm, I'd be pretty happy with that Cables, just a bit dry and a bit corroded, but nothing too too wrong with those. Not frayed. So, are you thinking that might be new cable time for this one? Or yeah, so I think as a matter of course for this bike, it's going to need new cables, uh, inners and outers, because uh, there's a bit of corrosion on these. 
there's corrosion on this like this there's probably corrosion inside the outer of the cables um, this is a nice bike for us from a mechanics point of view it's external cables yeah we like external cables don't we yeah <laughs> um, so um, pedals smooth as silk Shimano SPDs can't go wrong with can't those, go wrong with those can you? I think they're M520s bulletproof pedals really love them um, just a quick spin to see I'm going to have to just release the brake a bit quick spin catching on that few gears into it stop it from catching on the front radius so I can feel to see if the bottom bracket's smooth a bit difficult to do this really because you get you get more input from the rear than you do from the bottom bracket uh, but that doesn't this feel is too bad this is external Tiagra isn't it this one so yeah so it's uh, quite standard Shimano hollow tech uh, for modern type bearings I think these are quite robust a lot more robust than press fit so it's an external cup either side that screw into the frame. Is that spacer there? No, it's part of the frame. So that's just straight uh, into a 68 millimeter bottom bracket with no spacers. Nice and easy to replace. It is. But I think it's actually not too bad. Uh, crank arms. These are solid crank arms as opposed to things like Ultegra or Hollow. So I don't expect there to be any problem with these. On an Ultegra, I'd be checking to see if there's any delamination of the two sides of the crank arm but there's nothing like that going on on here so pretty happy with that Ooh. chain rings um inner chain ring is very is very good the teeth pro tooth profiles are excellent see just a little bit of turning over of these teeth um it's quite common on the outer on the road bike isn't it on the 52 because yeah. that's a compact 5034 there isn't it something like that that's right yeah it's difficult to tell you've got to be balanced about it because the teeth are different shapes yeah. for instance that's a fatter tooth sort of that way than one of these and that's done to help shifting and things like that so on the on balance it's not too bad there's one or two showing signs but i don't think a new chain will skip off that it will need to be tested under load to check it uh, but it yeah. might it might need a new outer chain ring but i doubt it Okay, okay, so I suppose what's all that's left to do now is start working on it then. Yeah, so the next thing from my point of view actually is to get in touch with the customer. So we've done our assessment. Yep. When it came in, I said it's at least a basic service, uh, which will do a lot of the stuff that we're talking about, adjustments and things like that. Uh, so I need to get in touch and say open above that, your wheels need through in and some new bar tape. Definitely some new bar tape. But generally, I can't see an awful lot more wrong with this bike. Yeah, it's definitely going to live again, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so for this episode, that's going to be just about it. We've gone through this bike. Well, Dave's gone through the bike. <laughs> <laughs> I just stood around. Dave's gone through the bike, fine tooth came. We've established this thing does need quite a lot of work. And as he's pointed out, as any good bike shop should do, the next step is to talk to the customer and see what they want basically yep. and what they're prepared to do yeah i know this customer has also hinted at upgrades and such like so could be a chance that when we come back to this for the service and the build that there might be some gucci bits and bobs going on with that let's see yep. what see, see what, what they go for so yeah thank you for watching stay tuned to the channel like and subscribe and you won't miss how this one turns out <laughs>